So I'll admit I was skeptical at first, but it really does seem as if Ron DeSantis is continuing to close the gap between him and Donald Trump with respect to a 2024 GOP presidential primary. Now, another poll confirms that, and I just want to say 2024 is quite a ways of way yet, but still, this does indicate that Trump isn't as strong as he once was, and certainly this may be his weakest point ever. As The Hill explains, a new Harvard Caps Harris poll survey shared exclusively with The Hill on Monday put DeSantis's growing strength into stark relief. Since last month, the Florida governor's standing in a hypothetical 2024 Republican primary improved by 11 points, bringing him up to 28 percent. Trump's support, meanwhile, plummeted nine points to 26 percent. While he still holds a double-digit lead over DeSantis, the poll marks a drastic shift in the former president's political strength as he embarks on his third campaign for the White House in six years. Now, when you look at individual states, it gets a lot better for DeSantis, at least according to this Club for Growth poll. So he's leading in Iowa, New Hampshire, Florida, and also Georgia. And a different poll of Florida's GOP from Victory Insights asks respondents if they, quote, want DeSantis to run despite Trump already announcing for 2024. And 42% said yes, 33% said no, and 25% are unsure. And even further proof that Trump is weaker, well, elected Republicans aren't necessarily coming out in droves to endorse him. He just has one GOP senator who is supporting him publicly, and that's Tommy Tuberville. And this is important because in the event his victory in the GOP's 2024 primary looked like an inevitability, they would all support him. They would get in line, and they will get in line if they need to. But the fact that they view him losing as a possibility and then withholding support for him shows that he is pretty weak currently because if he wasn't this weak, they would do what they view as inevitable. They would support him. So the question is, can DeSantis actually beat Donald Trump? And the answer, I think, is obviously yes. I think it's possible. Is it likely? Well, if this trajectory continues for DeSantis, then yes, he will eventually overtake Donald Trump. And I'll talk about whether or not I think DeSantis or Trump is like more destructive. I, I feel like that's a separate question. But in terms of what I want to happen, I do think that DeSantis beating Trump in a GOP primary is better for the country because Trump would then potentially attack DeSantis, cry fraud, and maybe try to run as an independent, something you know that he threatened back in 2016. So I think that outside of who is and isn't, you know, uh, more dangerous. That's a different question. I would like to see DeSantis defeat Donald Trump, but will he? I just feel like it's really too early to tell, right? So moving on to uh, general electability, because this is kind of a different picture for DeSantis. So back to the Harvard-Harris poll, The Hill explains, yet Trump still outperforms DeSantis when it comes to a hypothetical 2024 general election, the poll found. In a matchup against President Biden, Trump leads 44% to 42%. Against Vice President Harris, he holds an even bigger lead, 47% to 40%. DeSantis, meanwhile, is polling even with Biden, with each garnering 43% support in a hypothetical head-to-head -head matchup. With Harris on the ballot, DeSantis has a three-point edge, notching 42% support to the vice president's 39%. So this poll is saying that Ron DeSantis is less electable than Donald Trump. Now, I don't know if I buy that. I think that time will certainly change this. And Ron DeSantis, at least when you look at hypothetical matchups between him and Biden, overall is probably going to be viewed as more electable. But if it is the case that polls like this continue to hold and show that Trump has a better chance of beating Joe Biden, then I think that that kind of kneecaps DeSantis's efforts because what the GOP establishment can do is they can argue that you want to go with DeSantis even if you support Trump more because he's the best bet to defeat Joe Biden. But if the polls say otherwise, then who knows? I don't think that GOP voters, though, are similar to Democratic Party voters in that Democratic Party voters, they will be persuaded by electability and they will vote out of fear for who they believe is the best candidate to take on the Republican, whereas Republicans, they just kind of vote for whoever they like. And that's that. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to hold. I feel like DeSantis certainly has a better shot at beating Biden, even though Trump can beat Biden. I just feel like DeSantis overall, he does have more appeal 
to normies, especially given the way that he's governed in Florida. So I do think that he's a bigger threat. But at least according to this poll right now, you know, it doesn't seem to be the case. Although, look, things are certain uh, to change. And this is just one poll. So there's two questions that we've got to tackle. Can DeSantis win? And who do I think is more dangerous? So I've already kind of answered the question. Do I think that DeSantis can win? The answer is yes. Although if I had to make a guess, I'd say that currently he's not favored to win just because Donald Trump has that loyal cult of support that will never abandon him. And you can't just get people to leave their cult willingly. It's going to be a lot. It's going to take a lot more Republicans denouncing Donald Trump and not just a couple of media outlets like Fox News and the New York Post. So it's going to take a lot of Republicans and they're too afraid to speak out against Donald Trump. So as a result, he could win. And here's one thing that I, I think makes DeSantis's victory a lot less likely, in my opinion. When you compare the way that he speaks to Donald Trump, he lacks charisma. He doesn't have that appeal that Trump has, where Trump feels like he's just kind of speaking off the cuff. DeSantis comes off as a whiny baby. So, yes, Trump whines as well, but it's really like we're speaking about the tone of his voice. It's more shrill than Donald Trump's. And I know that that's not necessarily something that a lot of us consider when we're voting for politicians. But I do think that when you juxtapose these two men together, Trump will come off, for lack of a better word, as the alpha and DeSantis will come off as the beta. I mean, we saw the way that Trump took down an entire field back in 2015. Jeb Bush, Chris Christie, Marco Rubio, one after another after another. Ted Cruz. So I think that it's likely that he does this again. But if the whole GOP field is consolidated and it's just Trump versus DeSantis, then you have all the anti-Trump votes supporting DeSantis. That could help him. So when it comes to whether or not DeSantis can win, sure, he can win. Do I think that he will, though? I don't necessarily know, but I'm skeptical, and if I had to bet, I'd bet on Donald Trump currently, but certainly things are early, and that can change. In terms of who is more damaging and destructive to the country, I think that this is a hard question to answer because DeSantis and Trump are both very destructive, albeit in different ways. So when it comes to Donald Trump, I think that politically he is less of a threat because he shoots himself in the foot so much. He makes so much enemies and he just is incapable of governing competently. But I think that when it comes to democracy itself, he is a huge threat and his lies about the election are damaging. That leaves a lasting impact to our democracy. Whereas DeSantis, even though he supported election deniers and he's effectively rigged Florida's elections with extreme gerrymandering, I don't think that he is as clear of a present threat to democracy in the sense that I don't expect him to explicitly contest the results of elections if he loses them, right? However, where DeSantis comes in and where I think he's unquestionably worse than Donald Trump is policy. I think that he could do a lot more damage than Donald Trump as president. So, it's a mixed bag. On one hand, I feel like I'm kind of rooting for Trump to win the GOP primary because I don't think that he is as competitive against Biden as DeSantis. But at the same time, his lies about the election will cause lasting harm. However, hoping that DeSantis beats him and he runs as a third party candidate, that's opening the door to a DeSantis presidency, which I think ultimately would be the most destructive scenario because DeSantis as president could do damage. We got the way that he got, uh, we saw the way rather that he got normies to believe that queer people are pedophiles and groomers. He did that. After I thought that that trope had died, he resurrected it with a lot of help, you know, um, from right wing media. But nonetheless, he helped repopularize homophobia. So it's hard to say who is more destructive, but ultimately, I think overall, I'd argue that DeSantis is more destructive. And if I had to choose, between who would do less damage, I'd say probably Trump would do less damage, but there is an exception to that. I think that the damage Trump can do to democracy far surpasses the potential damage that DeSantis can do to democracy, even if he will be damaging to democracy. So ultimately, DeSantis is more of a threat, but I still hope he beats Trump in a GOP primary just so Trump throws a fit and runs as an independent. But either way, this is all just conjecture at this point. It's really early, and I don't like to speculate this soon, but it really is something to watch DeSantis rise up in the GOP uh, primary. It's early, but it's certainly a sign 
that the writing may be on the wall for Donald Trump. If this is the end of the Trump era, this is certainly the beginning, the beginning of the end of the Trump era. But we'll just have to wait and see because nobody really knows and all of us can only guess. Hey, listen up. Before you purchase gift cards for your family members from Netflix or Amazon, why don't you support a streaming service that doesn't exploit their workers? I'm, of course, talking about Means TV, who's having their annual Black Friday sale where you can get one year of Means TV for 50% off by using the code Comedy is Illegal. For those of you who don't know, Means TV is the world's first worker owned streaming service featuring anti capitalist documentaries, shows, news, and independent content creators like myself. Here at Means TV, we don't have some corporate overlord telling us what we can and can't say or do. We own the means of production. The content is ours. We are a democracy, and therefore, to support us, you're supporting a worker-owned co-op. So, if you want to sign up, that's means.tv slash join and enter the code COMEDYISLEGAL for 50% off of an entire year subscription. Listen, leftist propaganda is the gift that keeps on giving. So by enlightening one of your family members, you could be changing the world potentially. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.